Welcome to another episode of the NYC Godcast, where we offer a wacky wisdom weekly from God's Word. On today's episode, we are wrapping up our freedom series as we take a look at what it really means, according to Jesus, to be free indeed. Stay tuned. Well, uh, we are wrapping up the month of July today. Um, it's been a weirdly like long month. It feels like like it. we've had five episodes on freedom. Um, and I feel like the 4th of July ended the first week. And so we're like, wow. Uh, but it's been good. It's been good. It's been good to learn about uh, all the things about freedom. And uh, so today we're going to wrap that up uh, before we go into our next series. So today uh, I want to read out of John chapter 8. Um Jesus speaking, the Bible says this, then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They said to him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be free indeed. Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is a servant to sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. So Jesus gives us here, like uh, we talk all the time around here about um, Christianity is not a formula. Mm. However, (laughs) this sounds kind of like a formula. So Jesus says that um, he's talking. The first thing I want to bring up here is that Jesus is talking to Jews here who believed on him. Mm-hmm. So, like, this isn't Jesus talking to the masses. This isn't Jesus talking to lost people. He's actually talking to Christians. And Jesus says, there is a way to know if you are a Christian, if you are actually one of my disciples. And he says, the way to do that is if you continue in my word. That's how you know you're my disciple. If you continue in my word. But then he says, if you continue in my word, then you will know the truth. And if you know the truth, then and only then you'll be set free. So the reverse is also true. If you aren't continuing in his word, then you're not his disciple. And if you're not his disciple, you're not going to know the truth. And if you're not going to know the truth, you are not going to be free, which is why Jesus goes on to say uh, to these Jews who were trusting in Abraham that those who serve sin are slaves to sin. They're not disciples. They don't know the truth and they're captive. Um, these, these, these believers here in verse 33, you read said um, that were seeds of Abraham. They were trusting in their heritage and their traditions and their outward religion to make them free. And Jesus says, "Uh, uh-uh, you're in bondage. You're not free because the only way to be free is to know my word, endure my word, know the truth. And that truth is what will make you free. Interesting that you say, like, to be in bondage is to be free. Yeah. Okay. And in today's American society, when people think of bondage, the last thing they think of Mm -hmm. is that they're free because they feel restricted on what they can do. Yep. You know? Yep. So, um, but because the bondage is to the truth, now you're aware of the truth. And that in itself sets you free because the world in itself doesn't know the truth at at large. The world at large does not know the truth. So therefore they're kind of just stumbling Mm -hmm. around a slave to sin. Yeah. You know, it's like everyone is blindfolded except the Christian. Yeah. You know, so I love that Jesus says here, if you continue in my word, because I think there are a lot of Christians who like they, they come to an altar one time, they pray, you know, they crack open a Bible at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning, but like they don't continue in his word. And Jesus says that freedom only comes from truth and truth only comes from continuing in his word. And so may we each be challenged. Like, how can how how are you doing and continuing in his word? You know what I mean? Are you actually like continually seeking it, continually being changed by it? Uh, did you have something to go? I was just going along with what you were saying about continuing his word, how it's a the spiritual battle that we face, right? Every day we make a decision whether we're going to continue his word or whether we continue in, in the flesh or in, in the world, but how um, we overcomplicate it. Yeah. Right? We overcomplicate it. When it's supposed to be simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Mm-hmm. And we overcomplicate it. And because we overcomplicate it, we stumble and we make a mess out of things. Yep. Yep. But he, like you said, he, he lays it out so simple for mm-hmm. us. 
And so when we come to those decisions, right, when my wife says something to me that I don't like, I have the choice to snap back at her or keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. But because I don't want to, you know, seem like I'm the fool in that situation, yeah. I snap back and then I'm, <laughs> I'm lamenting for, uh, <laughs> for my comments much later. But it's so simple. Yeah. So but by not trying to be the fool, you end up being, being the fool. The fool. Yeah. Yeah. I, feel, I feel that. <laughs> Well, one of the illustrations that uh, we were actually talking about before we started recording um, is the illustration of the ocean. Mm. So uh, the ocean is uh, vast and ginormous. I, I believe, if I am correct from school, it covers 70% of the Earth. Is that more, right? than, more than that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, school is a very long time ago. Back in my day, it covered 70%, but who knows what it does today? Uh, it covers the majority, well over the majority of the earth is covered in ocean. And like, if you've ever been to the ocean, typically we're on the shore, we're on the beach and, you know, we, we see the beauty, we see the waves, we can see maybe some moss or some bubbles or some creatures, but we're on safety looking out. Well, Consider being in the middle of the ocean, mm -hmm. the very, very middle. So no matter how far you look to the left or the right, no matter how far you look ahead of you or behind you, you are surrounded by merciless water everywhere. And no matter how hard you try, you can't find in anything to grab onto because you're in the middle of the ocean. So you, you swim as hard as you can to the left. You swim as hard as you can to the right. You go down as deep as you can. You try as hard as you can to keep yourself afloat. And no matter how hard you try, you're surrounded by vast openness. A lot of people would think that is freedom to have no boundaries, to have nothing holding you back, nothing restraining you, nothing keeping you in check. That's actually terrifying in yes. every sense. That is the absolute, like, that's my worst nightmare. I can't even tell you how terrifying that is. Like, give me a whole world of spiders compared to that. That's just. I would agree with you. Yeah, that's terrifying. However, if you're in the same middle of the same ocean and you're in a boat, suddenly the bounds of the, the abundant waves around you are manageable. The reason is you're now restrained to that boat. You're now in something that keeps you buoyant. Now you have the freedom to enjoy the waves, to see the beauty of the ocean, to enjoy all that is around you from the safety of the boat. The problem is a lot of us want freedom, but we don't recognize that freedom is actually dangerous when left unchecked. And we think that this boat is actually restricting, this Christian life is actually restricting, but it's actually the most freeing and safest way to enjoy this life that we've been placed into. And so uh, the illustration has often been said that a boat should be in the water. The water should not be in the boat. A lot of times as Christians, we want the freedom of the ocean while claiming the boat, claiming Christ. And so we allow, you know, a pinhole there, a little hole in the bottom there, and water starts pouring into our boat. And all of a sudden things aren't what they should be. Suddenly we're being taken over by the very thing in the name of freedom. And so uh, the Christian life is not restricting. It's actually freeing from boundaries, freeing from within the bounds of Jesus Christ himself, who is our lifeboat. And that's what Jesus is saying here is to continue in his word, continue within the confines of who I am, continue within the definition of who I am defined as within my word, and you'll have truth and you'll be free. You'll be free to live this life in everything that I have offered you within the confines of my word within the confines of truth uh and if you do that then truth will set you free i think that when we also look at it from like a different point i, I love your ocean perspective because it's just white shark week but he just had to get that in there i had to i had to it was <laughs> brewing yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brought to you by the discovery channel <laughs> <laughs> but um so it's a popular term for very patriotic people to say freedom isn't free yeah you know what I mean? it, it it came at a cost and what they mean is all of the uh armed forces soldiers mm -hmm. you know who sacrificed their life so that we can live freedom mm -hmm. okay well if you look at it like if you take your average american and drop them off somewhere in some foreign country they're not going to do well mm -hmm. okay they, they're going to be overwhelmed by they can't speak the language, they don't know the culture, and they're going to look for something, anything yeah. American yeah. so that they can be safe again. 
you know? So the, the idea that freedom isn't free, okay, kind of applies here too, but yet it's, it, it's a different type of freedom, mm-hmm. I guess. You know what I mean? Because our freedom cost Jesus his life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we're supposed to pick up the cross as Christians and follow him in that same freedom, Mm -hmm. you know? But, like, I think a lot of people just think, like, freedom is easy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, like I said, from from a patriot's point point of view, freedom is anything but easy. It's warfare, and our freedom is spiritual warfare. Well, even in our country, and that's what we've been talking about all month, but, like, the fact that we have the constitution enables us to have rights. We have the bill of rights, which gives us rights. Like there's a, like our, our police officers, even our government officials, it does, it takes a lot to ensure you have that freedom to keep that freedom available to you. Mm -hmm. And in a almost backwards way, that's the same thing Jesus is saying. Like he purchased our freedom so that we could walk in this life of indeed freedom, which right. is defined as Jesus himself and the life he lived. And so uh, maybe we never take it for granted, but maybe we never take it lightly either and recognize that it is costly, but it is defined. Right. It's defined freedom, just like the Constitution defines our rights here in, in America and the Bill of Rights defines our rights. God has defined the rights of a Christian and freedom is found by walking in the bounds of that right. Mm-hmm. Freedom is not open ended, vast openness. That's not freedom. That's terrifying. (laughs) And I don't think any of us would want to live in a country that operated under complete, open, unrestricted, no law of the land freedom. You know what I mean? I think one of the most terrifying pictures that the Bible paints, um, while we do um, see hell and everything, but one of the most terrifying pictures um, is when God gives you you, um, to your own lusts Mm -hmm. and just basically he gives you in to live the life however you want to live it and you just see just how deprived that life is just how sad that life is because it's a life apart from god Mm -hmm. and the bible when you read it from cover to cover you see it's a picture that's painted of what who god is and what he wants for his creation right we were creating his image and what man's decision was we we're not really free we have a master regardless of what position we ch- we mm-hmm. choose we either uh, have the master of sin in our life mm-hmm. or we have the master of christ in our lives mm-hmm. the ironic part though is when we say that prayer of jesus come into my life i i repent i no longer want to live for sin i now want to live for you but then you turn around and you walk this christian life as you were saying earlier, uh, compromising to sin. Mm -hmm. That's the very thing you asked him to save you from. You know, that's the very thing that you asked them, but yet you're compromising. You're allowing it a little bit, a little bit in your life. And it's kind of like you have one foot in one foot out. Mm -hmm. And it's really just a sad existence to live in that way. The good news is that our, our, our good master does not let us live that way. And he continues to um, chastise us in love and continues to uh, show us a better way. And it's through messages like we heard this morning in Sunday school or through this podcast that we hear these things. He continues to to lay it out in front of us in such a simple way to saying like, hey, you're messing up. Mm-hmm. Come back. Come back to me. Yeah. Did you have something? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh. It's so, Shark Week. <laughs> that's all I had to say. <laughs> Thinking of Jesus as our lifeboat and kind of going with what Miguel was saying, we can sit in the lifeboat and get nowhere. But we're still in the lifeboat, Mm -hmm. right? But then, like, it's going to have, we're all going to get cracks or holes in our lifeboat. Like, living in the lifeboat still requires work. If I was put in a sailboat in the middle of the ocean, I wouldn't go anywhere because I don't know how to (laughs) sail. (laughs) How to sail or boat. Yeah, I don't know how to do anything. Spin around. So, yeah, I don't know how to get anywhere. I mean, I've watched Moana a couple times, but it's not. I don't think that's how it works. (laughs) So, you have to learn your boat. You have to take care of your boat. It's not just you sit and you are, this is it. Like, you have to work on it and take care of it. So I think that, so as we wrap up this month with freedom, I think really big picture, what we've learned is that the Christian life is not a life of rainless, open vastness, wideness, freedom. Instead, the Christian life is a life of free will to choose to submit. And that's what Miguel was saying. God created us with free will. And so we get to, with that freedom to choose, choose either to serve the ruler of this world, which will end in destruction, or with our free will, choose 
to serve and submit to Christ and his will for our lives. And that's what Jesus is saying here is if you're my disciple, you'll choose that. If you're my disciple, you'll walk in my truth. And that truth will actually lead to freedom, living in the lifeboat in the vast ocean and seeing all that I've created. And so may we choose wisely. Um, Indecision is a decision in and of itself. And that decision is the wrong decision. And so each of us will stand one day before God and we will give an account for what we did with our freedom, with what choice we made with that freedom we were given. And so good stuff. All right. Well, uh, today's uh, featured content is Who You Say I Am by Anthem Lights. Uh, Today's considerable quote comes from D.L. Moody, and he says this, he didn't come to set us free and leave us in servitude. He came to give us liberty now and forever. Uh, we do have a question from camp, um, and we kind of uh, sort of cover this a little bit already on today's episode. Uh, but this question, um, I don't know who it's from, but the person wrote this. Can you still do fun stuff? Um, I'm assuming you're asking. I'm assuming that's not a personal question. Like, am I capable, Josh, of doing fun? Because uh, I have had that question before. Uh, the answer is no. But for the Christian, I'm assuming your question is, like, after you get saved, can you still do fun things? Um CJ. Uh, So kind of like we said today, can you still do fun things after you're Christian? The answer is absolutely 100% positively yes. I would venture to say that you can't actually have true fun until you become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like we talked about on today's episode, being a Christian enables you to live in the ocean, to live in the abundance of life God has given you from the safety and confine of who Christ is. Um, And so it's not that once you get saved, you can't do this, this and this and this and this. It's once you get saved, you can do that, that and that and that. You can now live to the fullness of Christ. You can now know your lifeboat and know who he is and see all that he's created from within him. And so, um, yeah. Anyone else have thoughts on that? Can you still do do fun stuff after you're Christian? The beautiful part is that when you give your life to Christ, he changes your desires. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the things that are fun, the things that bring joy are the things that are that are worth it. You know, the things that are going to uh, have a long lasting effect. And I think a lot of the times we search for happiness and happiness is just based yeah. on happenstance, right? Yeah. What's happening right at the moment. But joy is something that's everlasting. And so, yeah, absolutely. You can have fun. And the beautiful thing is that Jesus is the one that defines that fun for you yeah. and the joy that comes with it. So, yeah. He pretty much stole half what I was going to say there. What's the other half? I'll let the half. Charlie <laughs> <laughs> <Charlotte. Charlotte> was <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> when you can find to where you can go, it's really fun. But, yes, you can absolutely have fun. But like Miguel said, your definition of fun is going to change. Like, if you truly gave your life to Christ, your definition of fun is going to change. Mm-hmm. So, and then you actually, like, there is a relief in having fun within the boundaries of Christ versus having fun outside the boundaries of Christ. Because when you try to have fun outside the boundary of Christ, you have that shadow just yeah. hanging over you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. should I really be doing this? Yeah. And when you start thinking that way, can you truly have fun? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I don't know where I use this example at teaching someone somewhere somehow, but it's like if your parents tell you, no, you can't go to that pool party, okay, and you think you know better, so you sneak out and you go, the minute you get there, there's a fear coming over you that is preventing you from truly enjoying yourself. Sure. You know what I mean? And and that's how it is. Trying to have fun outside of Christ, like, it's just a feeling that you have mm-hmm. that what you're doing is what you shouldn't yeah. be doing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But when you have fun within Christ, like, you can truly, like, do a cannonball in the pool and not have to worry about any consequences. Yeah to what you're doing. Lots of water today. Uh, I, a couple of scriptures that come to mind. Uh, the Bible says that um, his laws are not laborious to us. Yes. And so kind of to you guys' point, like he changes our desires. To a non-believer, the Bible is foolishness, Paul writes. 
And so looking at all these things that he desi- he desires for us and requires of us, that looks very unfun. It's foolishness, nothing I would want. But once your heart becomes transformed by Christ and once you become a new creature, an old things creature, and old things are passed away and all things have become new, uh, suddenly your desires change. Mm-hmm. And so he puts a new heart within you and you now desire the things. David wrote that I delight in your law, right? And so now what God says is fun is now what you think is fun. And the things that really lead uh, to destruction, I don't, I don't know what this person means by fun. But a lot of times in this world, when we think of fun, we think of things like, you know, drinking at parties or things like premarital sex or things like drugs or things like high speed chases or whatever the case, uh, swimming with sharks, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but the, the thing is, who has your who is who is defining your desires? That's really what it comes down to for the Christian. Who is defining your desires? You can still have fun. Um but as Jesus already said, it has to be within the confines of who he is. And if you're truly a Christian, he will change your desires to match his desires. And that's fun. I heard a testimony. Um, I think it was last year after camp. Uh, one of the young girls that went to camp after uh, that Saturday was invited to a party. And she went to this party and there was drinking in there. And she left the party because of the drinking. But she left very upset because she wanted to be at the party. And she was upset there was drinking at the party. So when she left, she was kind of feeling left out. And I don't know what was what happened after that. Um, but what I want to say is in that moment, even though it sounds burdensome, rejoice in that because God is changing you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. While at one point you might have had fun at that party, but now God is changing your desires. That is the very definition of what we're talking about. God is changing you. You wouldn't have fun at that party. And even if you try to force yourself to be there, You would just be miserable because living a life outside of the boundaries that Christ has set for you Mm -hmm. is a miserable life. And you can be a Christian. We're not saying that you're going to go to hell. We're not. You can be a Christian, but you're going to live a miserable life because you're not living the life that God has called you to. It reminds me of the scene in the Gospels where uh, Jesus has already died and, and rose again. And Peter says, I go a fishing. And so Peter returns back to this former desire of his, this former way of enjoyment, right? Uh, he strips down and goes fishing all night and he takes the disciples with him. Uh, naked fishing with my friends is not on my fun list, but apparently it was for Peter's. And so, you know, they're fishing. Well, all of a sudden they find out Jesus is ashore. And the Bible says that Peter, once he discovered it was Jesus, he left again the boat behind and he went and pursued Christ. He covered himself first. Uh, but the point is this, like Peter's desires really had changed. And so he, he finds himself tempted and tampering with things that used to fulfill him and used to bring him joy. And he recognizes that's, that, that does, that's not true joy. That's not true fun. That's not truly what satisfies. And so he once again leaves that behind and follows up to Christ. And as Miguel said, like that, that really should be the story for all of us. We should all have things we look at that once we enjoyed. But if I were to do that again today, like it's nothing compared to knowing Jesus. It's nothing compared to serving him and the satisfaction only he can bring. And so it, it's the woman at the well uh, leaving behind her water pot because she found eternal life bubbling up within. So one more time, Shark Week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Today's uh, birthday shout outs go to Jalisa Capper, Tarina Walker, Jenny Sorrell, Jesse Durfee, Tony Walker, Sophia Schlegenhauser, Walker Moore, and Brandon Justice. Well, welcome. <laughs> Welcome to your birthday. Yeah. We are grateful to be here with you. Let's have some cake. Uh, happy birthday. Uh, we hope it's a great one. And uh, did we get all the parts and pieces? I don't know. I think we did. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we are launching a brand new series next week in the month of August. Mm-hmm. That comes Already. Next. Wow. Uh, and so next week, you want to tell us a little bit about that? No. <laughs> did you title it different? I did not. No. I don't remember the title. Facing fears. Facing fears. Fighting fears. Facing fears. Something with. It'll be scary, whatever it is. Uh, And so, yeah, join us next week. Uh, We're going to take a look at the different places in the Bible where men uh, and women step up and face their greatest fears and how God overcomes that fear in and through them. And so, yeah, we're looking forward to that next month on the NYC Godcast. Well, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and watch Shark Week. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye, guys. No, but they look. I I think their eyes are faced forward. Oh, they're not at the end of the hammer. I think it's like a little.
to uh, um, you know, yeah, a little. PBC so you didn't pay very much close attention to Shark Week, did you? I really did. 